down but then the one that actually got me hooked to the t- uh, tv was a uh, facebook uh, program live, my, broadcast. live pro- uh, broadcast and wow i don't even know it's like even stuck in the front of uh, everybody today is a miracle because this fair kind of a thing before yeah. i even Religion, but you said you are not like that before. Yeah, I wasn't because Is I this was, what religion does yes, to us? Yes, yes. Yes. I, I was, I was How can you be somebody who was bored before? Yeah, because who I was, had confidence? I've never seen a Jebu man who is timid. I was about to mention that because when you mentioned workaholics, the first person that came to mind was my dad. He's a very hard working, very bold. I, I saw a bit of my dad because my dad doesn't fear nobody in a positive way. Yeah, that's what I've said. And that is the way I am full of confidence. Until I was, I would say when I get born again, took yeah. me that minute because I wasn't a timid yeah. person at all yeah. mm. before I became born again. Church, and I was trying to think that would be the it's only, that's the only way to live so that I can make heaven. Who's the one that was talking? But up. then I realized I was actually because everything I'm a kind of. I ah. <laughs> I've, I've, come, I've come at this. I say every confidence that any man has stolen it from me, I'm getting it back. Because I've, I've, I've been here today, yesterday. And today. So you were normal before? Normal. Your dad had that confidence. And you were having it. Mm-hmm. They started going to church. I'm coming back. Yeah. So even to talk like this, it would have been. Mm-hmm. You we... notice that today when they're giving the yeah, everybody was giving comment about it. I actually sneak out of the. <laughs> I didn't say anything today. I was like, oh, don't let me face this camera. I'm not there yet. I'm working on myself. Mm-hmm. I always like to postpone it until I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And there's one of the stuff that he will never do this. Yes, we came to get our part of grace. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, he yeah, 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 said, God, I said, I, 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 I said, no, this kind of thing, God, yeah. catch you now. So God didn't allow it. You are arrested yeah. by God. And I said, it's just going to be what you now see there. why I talk so hard. And I come directly about what the African churches are doing to people. They are killing God's people. Yeah. They are breaking my father's heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talked last night, we were talking about Jesus had one practice that he said he hates more than any. Mm-hmm. One doctrine. And 95% of my exposure to African churches mm-hmm. has been this doctrine of the Nicolaitans, this practice of the Nicolaitans, which sounds very fancy. Nico is Greek for conquering. Laity is the layman, the laity. Mm-hmm. The conquering of the lady. This thing that you have to submit to the elder. Yes. And the, the Bible doesn't say that. It says in Hebrews, the last chapter, submit to the wisdom that's coming through your leaders. Yeah, submit to the wisdom that's coming through your leaders. But not just submit to them. So people go to church, they hang up their brain at the front, and they just wait to be told what they're supposed to do, and they wait to have their loyalty tests so that they can yes. get enough attention and, you know, they have to pay enough tithes and they have to pay enough yes. dues in all kinds of different ways. And then they can, the, 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 and even the pastors are a victim of the system. Most of them don't even know yeah. that they're in a wrong system. Yeah. Yeah. So when pastor, when you're speaking so confidently, now we all know this here, but maybe the people who are watching don't know this, that when he's speaking so confidently and he's shaking his head and saying, oh, you're stuck in your job stuff, it's because the revelation God's taught him, he's realizing what's supposed to happen with this woman's life. And he's seeing, even though she's yes. start to come free, she's still somewhat a slave to the system. And he's like, he's getting prophetic understanding about what's I'm supposed pain. to happen. I'm in pain yes. how people are being ruined. Mm-hmm. Mm. And this is not just one people, personal. Mm-hmm. But these are thousands of people in this church. Yeah. Yeah. It's only what happened to her. It's what happened to um, Doris Inker, right? She used to be in, a, in our church, and then um, so many things happened, and then um, eventually, I think she got a, another church run by a Ghanaian pastor, and I think it's a new church or so to send. They're looking, maybe they saw her and um, got um, connected to her, and she felt that Lord is leading her to go there to her. And because she was a choir leader in my church, and she's a very strong, vibrant lady, it was like a problem between the two pastors. Whereas in our church, they put her behind. Then now this other pastor maybe has seen what God has put in her and wanted her. And it was like a bit of, you know, a struggle between the two of them. So eventually they had to release her, but kind of like go. So she went there, and she's a 
big shot. Her own, you're saying you're mad. Her own is crazy double. My multiply by madness. Every second she's talking about you. In the morning she's on it. Someone comes to make clothes, she's talking about you. It was her that sent the, the, the invite. And when I called her just now, she called me. I said, please, pass it for me at 11 o'clock. She said, I saw you. She's screaming, she's, she's, she's really <laughs> crazy. So in her new church, um, because they made her to be the PA or whatever to, in the new place, she said to the pastor, because when they send those, um, when a sister we will say, she will shout, shout, shout even to my former pastor. So her new pastor had told her, because she's working closely with him, he said, I am a DSA, a DSA prophet. Mm -hmm. Nobody will hold me bound. I am running my own race. So Pastor called her see. He's like, you are running crazy and being distracted. Pastor, look at me. Is there anything I'm supposed to do as your PA and not do? That man is my mentor. I said, you're telling your pastor the <laughs> is your mentor. They will say the way because you left where we used to watch by your hair now. She said, I don't care. This man has taught me all I need to know. She's she's God. Free. Free. Then I think that was January. She opened up and she, and she opened up this thing in prayer something in, in, in uh, through Facebook. Facebook no, to, um, in, um, it was a forum. And the testimony she's getting, she said, okay, this is one of the one of the I things God has. So so when, when I said, maybe we'll go to you, Christian. Go, 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 go. I'll look after your children. Come back with the best <laughs> leg. <laughs> Just go and touch your leg. Then when you come back, I'll come to your house. <laughs> I'll come and touch you. <laughs> so I said to her this evening that uh, maybe when, that's when I, um, I see you, I will just call you so you can say hello to this. She said, yeah, please do that. I'll be happy. <laughs> she's, everybody she sees coming to make clothes, she's talking about DSA. Have you heard? She will send it. Her own is something else. <laughs> <laughs> Doris, what? Ngere. Ngere. Yeah. I used to hear your friends say, hello, Sister Doris Ngere, yeah. the way you're with you. Yeah. I mean, you haven't seen her face here. Yeah? No, I've not seen her face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to tell a secret that will help people. When Pastor is talking so boldly about, you need to read this book, this book will change your life. The book is so great. People can easily mistake it and think, let another praise you and not your own lips. But he is not praising himself. Every book is a registry of the download he has had from the Holy Spirit. So that's why you're hearing all this boldness. Please correct me if I'm wrong, sir. But that's where all this boldness is coming from, because this is what's been received from heaven. And why is he receiving more than everybody else? It's not a magic formula. If you're taking time alone with God, and you're expecting instruction, God will deliver. Amen. Maybe to continue your story. <laughs> so, like I said, I just uh, stopped going to the church since I uh, started watching the, the program. Um, I just continue to watch the program, I'm learning every day, but I noticed that I'm not the same person when I started. Amen. And someone mentioned about praying about all this demon and everything. I don't even, if the devil even come into the room, I see him like. I will just go back to bed because yes. he has no power over me. <laughs> that's, his belief, that's his real deliverance. Because, I, like I said, I attached fear to many things, and because the kind of prayer point they will not pay. I, I commented on the Facebook one time that uh, fear based prayer points. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. after you left the prayer meeting, you go over and they're meditating on. So they will actually do this to us, right. but then they've already told you, they've, they've already made you they believe you. that it's good, if that's what they are doing. But now, if I don't even attach anything to the devil. But I'll just say you're a liar. Amen. Because Amen. you have no power over me. Amen. Because everything that could have been suggestion to me, that oh, maybe God doesn't want me to go to Ukraine. I said, God will not ask me to not to go to where I'm going to be. You see, people who are because sending fear to people who they don't know what they have been listening to. Hmm. The lady from New Zealand who came here last month, what was her name? Rochelle White. Rochelle White. Rochelle White. You know, a prophet former church, mm -hmm. renowned prophet, so-called mm -hmm. leader mm -hmm. in the church, mm -hmm. came to her and said, don't go to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Because if you go, you will not come back. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, it's a wrong doctrine that Pastor Sunday is in error because she tried to listen and said, you, your flight, she God revealed to her, she saw a vision that the flight was crash. going to crash. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was putting fear in her, but she doesn't know who this woman has been listening to. Mm. That the fear of Satan has been rendered irrelevant yeah. in her life. Mm. In fact, it has been rendered irrelevant mm. in her life. Yes. If they, Satan and all those things playing with Christ, she's, been, she's addicted also. Rochelle White 
She is addicted. <laughs> she is addicted to this message. So when they were telling her that, she said, yes, that's the more reason I want to get to that flight, so I do not go down. <laughs> because I'm going to fly in there, I'm going to get there. I don't care, I'm going to get there and come back. I said, so what happened when you got back? The prophet disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so do I see someone who used to walk, who used to pray those prayers before, who used to live in that fear. See what she said now. I like that. Amen. If I wake up and I see Satan like this, I will just be useless, useless man. <laughs> come, come on for you, for you know, That is deliverance. That one right there is someone that is addicted of God, yes. by God and with God. Yes. That one there is someone that the kingdom has taken over and taken charge of. That is how we are all supposed to be. Can we imagine if Nigeria, if Africa, if we have that at Christians, all Christians, we have that attitude? You will just set that whole continent free. Yes. Because the Christians are even more afraid mm -hmm. of Satan. But in the area of fear, I wanted to say that people might be talking about fear. It's not just fear. Is I can even write a book about it. What I experienced about fear. There was a time I lost fear of death for three years before I turned forty, and I was looking for any of my friend that can trust my children with. It got to that stage. Yeah, because every little thing the devil will tell me you can you will not make it. You gonna it was so bad. And everybody around because all the prayer yeah. meetings, all the prayer, yeah. something yeah. somebody yeah. wants to kill yeah. yeah. that was really strong. Old affair. But after that, substituted that message about everyone, everything as they let the dead come now for me to leave. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's for it's for pride and to even go. I want to walk on that street of glory because at the end of the day, we're all gonna die for one day anyway. Why am I afraid of death? Because it was so bad. Somebody said to me, I can smell. A grave around you. To, it's called, yeah. That is the kind of things yeah. people that tell people in that, church. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I could use some, I don't smell. But the grave don't have smell. Now. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> that is like the, that is the the of those kind of stuff. Yeah. Them that's 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 and I was like, I, I don't know, I'll make it to 40, mm -hmm. but I'm still counting, I'm over 40, and I'm still counting. And the pastor said something about, he didn't know that he's going to make it to 50. And Chase just started dropping and said, I was in this state. Although what his experience is different from mine, but mine is like I don't think I wouldn't make it to fall because the lot of, and it attacks some pain. When I started thinking about that pain, I will be having this chronic pain, different place in my body. Yeah, wow. I will be having pain. Real, you know, because the taking, pastors, the yeah, prophets, you know, for because of their relevance, they put fear in everybody so that you <laughs> they, you will be dependent on them, wow. so that you will need them. Okay, I believe that happens maybe one time out of five. But I think four times out of five, what happens is, because of the deception of the system, yeah. demons take advantage of it mm -hmm. and give people false prophecy mm -hmm. and false yeah. discernment. And the enemy takes advantage of it, and it becomes real. Mm -hmm. That's why you feel the pain in your body. It's actually demonic stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so these prophets are picking up something in the spirit realm. They believe it's the Holy Spirit speaking, but it is a familiar spirit. It's, it's a, a familiar spirit. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's a wrong spirit. I know a prophet that they're not not just one of them, many of them, that is always calling down the telephone number of somebody, mm -hmm. yeah. account number, yeah. pants caller. Yeah. So then and some of his children, if you see the way they are worshiping this man, in fact, some of them came to Ukraine and said, Pastor, you need to call the man of God because you know he will give you, he will just. So I found out, I did my research, found out who his friends were. So one of his friends was, a, he's called him, he calls himself my son. You know, I don't do all this. But that is, it is like a distant disciple, just a friend. I call him a friend. But this man has been to his church many times to preach. So I called him and I said, what about this man? He said he's in Inten in Nigeria now. And the man told me, that guy, forget about God. Just if you, if he's coming from one road, run to the other road. <laughs> I said, what about the telephone numbers he's calling? In fact, today said that some friends of mine from England, pastors from England, were saying, Pastor, this man is real. Mm. 
Well, the, words of, the words of knowledge nature. are real. The words of knowledge. No, 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 they are not real. They're not even real, though? They are not even real. Oh. It's all corruption. Fake. Deception. It's all, all kinds of arrangements. Uh -huh. They will arrange, somebody knows somebody will give their your number, yeah. telephone yeah. numbers, yeah. and they are something, they, they talk to your name, oh, all kinds of oh, crooked no. stuff. Anyway, so he said, if you see that man coming one way, run the other way. And this man is gathering crowd in England, he's gathering crowd in America, in Ireland, everywhere, in Italy. Well, people don't know about this. People don't want anyway. Huh? Huh? They want a crowd. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, think, I think a lot of the time we say the leaders are doing this and the leaders are doing that. I think the leaders are like... Uh, an organism that is feeding. I'm still going to leave it until the end. Good night. Bless you. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes. I, I think that the leaders are feeding. Jinnah is Jinnah's last name of one. That's my surname. Yes, that's my surname. But the other one, what, the other one looks like his surname too. No, that's my middle name, Anota. That's my middle name. Anota. Anota, yeah. That's what we used to be a Muslim mentor. Yeah, I will come to that. We have to yeah. come. <laughs> you have to tell us the whole full story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now she's getting to the century. Wow. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Just one of say something briefly about this issue of fear and how she gets on why the, the churches are at the wholesaler they manufacture it they package it they, they sell it are you serious? you know the Bible talks about faith comes by hearing yeah. hearing by the word of God yeah. fear comes by the same way fear comes. Yeah. Ultimately, every man becomes a product of the word they sit on there. Because the word you hear day in, day out, all the time, every time, that is true. it affects your emotion. Your emotion affects what you do, which is your action. Your action affects your character. Your character determines your destiny. So ultimately, people see your character, people see your, your action, and they're trying to resolve the symptoms when all they need to do is look at the root. The root is the word that we sit on. Either it's the word of fear or the word, or the word of, of faith. faith. For instance, uh, a lot of testimonies of some of us that have been in churches, that go to churches, that have lived all our lives in churches, and yet we have no, nothing to show for it, no result to differentiate us from, in fact, we are worse off than we were wow. before we started going yeah. to church. And then suddenly, the same people, mm -hmm. nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is they start listening to you. They start hearing something different. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, things in their lives start to change. Mm -hmm. That is well said. Mm -hmm. That is well it said. Is, we are all the product of the word we sit under. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. We were talking during dinner tonight, mm -hmm. and we're talking about, the, and I said something about the difference we're talking about church leaders and all of that. And I said there's a difference between a boss, that's your big organ, and a leader. Mm -hmm. Your boss will give you instruction. He will supervise that instruction. He will smack your head if you make a mistake. If you do a good job, if it's on a good day that he's happy with, his, with himself, he will say thank you, or he say well done. That's what the boss does. But a leader will see who you are, what you are, what is the what is the the core of you as a person, 
And in most cases, you don't even see. But a leader sees that. And that leader will drag you up the hill, screaming and shouting, until you become that thing that they've seen in you. Brilliant. Now, the Brilliant. only reason a leader can do that to you is because that leader has been at that mountain himself. That's why you can only give to somebody what you have. And that is, in my, as far as I'm concerned, the difference I have seen in listening and following your doctrine and just listening to what you say, how you say it. I was born into a Muslim family, became, a, a, became born again, and I've been a Christian since 1992. And in that period, I have been through a lot of leadership and a lot of churches and all of that. And it got a point when we had the privilege to hear you preach and to sit under your, under your administration. And suddenly, it became chalk and cheese. The difference. Ooh. It's clear. Chalk and cheese, the difference. Because, let's be truthful to ourselves, we are, we are too old now to be lying to ourselves. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> the, reality, the reality is, we've all tried religion, it's not working. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've all followed uh, the August said, and the pastor said, and the prophet said, and the evangelist said. And the truth is, it's not working. It's not even scratching us where it is itching. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly, you find something else that is not just scratching you where it's itching, but it's holding your hand to that same spot. It's not just scratching it, but it's putting the balm of Gilead to soothe that scratch. The question is, what would you rather have? And a lot of people, sir, that there's a there's a there's a, a cloud gathering within the Christendom that is seriously afraid of what is coming out from here. Are you serious? Oh yeah. They 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 are afraid. They are not afraid of you, sir. They are not afraid of you. They are afraid of what is coming out because it is changing lives. Just like are you serious? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. What does a slave master? Well, he just started eight months ago. Less than a, a year. A slave master. What does he hate the most? Freedom of his slave. Freedom of his slave. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, one by one, the shackles are falling. Me, I'm going to start the thing again. Now. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Pastor, yes. Pastor, yes, you have to do it. Pastor, with all due respect, sir, <laughs> it will be an indictment against you if you don't start. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, look, look at this room. Mm -hmm. Just look at the representation of the people in this room, their background. Their country, their experience in life, their exposure, their everything. Mm -hmm. Is it is it a coincidence that all of us suddenly left our homes and our families and everything to be here? Mm -hmm. so, and and he, he, he has more. Who are no good at here? Who doesn't have a How are you? Like Doris here. However, however, <laughs> however, there's a proverb in Yoruba. I told you, I told you, I told you, When you go from house to house, you will know from which house. Better soon. <laughs> so when you don't go around anyone, you just go to that house because you know you will not just be fed, but you will be fed with good food. 
All of us, not just us in this room, every human being that God has given their liberation, their deliverance in your mouth, they will stand against you in judgment if you don't start this thing. Are you serious? Let's take a look at why. Okay, can we analyze? Do you want to speak first? No, go ahead. You start it. Okay, listen. It said today in the program, beautifully said, it's been 15 years of Sundays, equivalent amount of preachings that yeah, you've done in eight yeah, months. Yeah. Wow. So, the Ukrainian pastors were saying six weeks ago here, they're jealous. His closest pastors are saying they're jealous of the DSA family. They, many of them see that some of you, know, remember, in your office, and, and they're saying, they're like, many of you are moving ahead faster than them. Why? Because, if, this is just my analysis, okay, I don't say thus says the Lord, but to get as much time with Him as what you guys have had. They've had to go through hundreds and hundreds of... 15 years. They've had to go through 15 years of time and all kinds of exams and all kinds of reading books and all kinds of red dots and discipline. And all of a sudden... Past this Sunday. Now, I've been at almost every HMT for the last five years. Almost every one. And I've watched how it's evolved. And he become moved away more and more and more from the human discipline, not dismissing it, but to the frustration of his co-workers. Because they, know, because they know what it meant in their life. They needed it in Ukraine. But he's moved more and more and more toward relational HMTs. Okay, I'm saying as an observer and as a, as a friend and maybe a little bit as a father, right? So what I see is you gave so much in such a short time and the word, like you're saying, has borne the fruit. And so the Lord says, now I will say the Lord says, it is not just to continue as you're doing. It is time to raise up leaders. It's very lovely, your interaction with people. It's very nice, all that stuff. But the Lord says, people want you to get to the point. And people want to download from you what I have given you. And I will have people join you who can keep up, says the Lord. It is not your responsibility, excuse me, it is not your responsibility to, it is not your responsibility to, to dial down for their sake. Because the ones who don't understand, they will go to the ones who do. They'll go to Jeff. They'll go to the different ones who get it. Mm -hmm. You must start to raise up leaders. I, I tell one little more thing. I was sitting in that ch in your chair over there at 10.30 tonight. I came a half hour early. Jeff came in. He wanted to talk. I said, please just give me a few minutes. I'm listening to God. God was speaking to me. I'm 61. He's told me when, he, when I, I believe he's told me when, I'm, when he's coming back. Not the hour of the day, but the year. And so I know how many years I have to work with. And then he's had me do the math based on what he's told me about my calling. And I was thinking, okay, that means 2,500 people a year uh, and then doubling it every year after. How am I going to do that, Lord? And I got stuck and I was sitting and I'm thinking through and I'm thinking through and I'm thinking through and I'm thinking through and I'm thinking. And, I'm thinking, and finally, just because of the environment, you emphasize that for me more than anything. As soon as I showed the slightest interest for HMT was environment. So everybody that's around you here, they're moving into that environment of so much light. And God says it's your time to take this environment out. And it will go viral, says the Lord. It won't be just two or three hundred million people looking here and there. It's going to be, you're going to have an immediate increase of major leaders who will start to pledge allegiance to the revelation that God is giving. Says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow, 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 wow. You see, Pastor, what I'm saying here is this thing. You know, at this moment in time. Where are your boys? Boys? Kids? No, you're old. They went to Tennessee back to Tennessee. Where? Tennessee University. Are you serious? Yeah, they kept the same thing by day to hang out with me. I thought you were from England. No. Oh, my little brother, I did the name the same university with William. So? Yeah, I tell her. Okay, do I? It's all right. <clears throat> the, we, well, I'll compare this with the situation of terrorism in the world now. The world's superpowers 
are doing so much to crack down on these things. And they are blasting and bombing and doing everything. But these people, they have an ideology and a philosophy and something to die for. And then most of these, most of these guys being away put it through the internet and the social media. And the thing that you see, you can't kill ideology. Yeah. You can't destroy ideology. You can kill a human being, yeah. but that ideology, when it's multiple, you can't, you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. The only way that you can affect it is to bring a superior that to superimpose upon that ideology. I mean, we, as if we are in church and people talk about fear and their religion and everything. What is happening here, and what I'm saying is that there is a superior one which is coming to explain in post. Ba -ba -ka -sa -ka -la -ra -ba -ka -sa and it is being filtered and move around like this. And social media, by the help of social media, people are, there, are catching down barriers. And it, 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 it becomes like it to be indestructible. Because I'm catching it. In, 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 this one is in New Zealand, this one is in, in UK. At first, it's within, I mean, within a short, short time, time, everybody was imbibing into this with different experiences. And that's the reason why the, we can get into that revolution and then it will be like a fire because you can't destroy the person. Esther Kuganja, are you too tired today? You just flew in today. Because Esther has one of the most powerful stories about fear, what we are talking about. Not just fear, intimidation, fear, religion, constraint, restriction, slavery, slavery, slavery bondage, fear. And but she had the most beautiful uh, uh, testimony. Please, because I tried to even relate your story the other day. I want, I want to present you to the world. She's the one who wrote that book, yeah. Breaking Stigmatization, or what do you call it? Uh, How a single black woman can overcome stigmatization. Yeah, would you like to see it or stand? Oh, wow. How a single woman can overcome stigmatization. Because your story is beautiful. And I don't want you to be modest. I want you to go into your details and take your time. You are so beautiful and colorful. Is it because I started talking about color? No, yes, Pastor. You taught us to wear brightly. Here I am. Because you've been here twice or twice. Twice, yeah. Twice. I have not seen you wear this thing before. It's me. Beautiful. Bright. Brilliant. Colorful. Thank you, Pastor. So you, you caught me when I was just, I think, dreaming, because I, I was on another topic, uh, listening to this uh, pro problem of fear. You know, I've been to Africa for a long time, and that's where my burden is. Thank God in the Europe and uh, Western world, we have internet, so we can eat from pasta through Facebook. I went to Uganda, pastor, there is no, there are Christians. But the ones I've checked, there is no church. People talk, no character. So I said, God, how can we bring? First of all, I tried to connect to Facebook. Nigeria. How many of you have heard me on Facebook and said, there is no church in Nigeria? How, how many of you have heard me say that? I said that. She saw the same thing in Uganda. You tried to connect internet, uh, you know, that's why you couldn't see me. There's no internet. So I say, how can we bring all these messages here? Even if you have to record them on Even you couldn't connect? I couldn't. Even to open to open the email, it takes hours. There's no... We have a problem of internet, Pastor. And then, even if you have to give people CDs to listen to, there's no time. Oh, we are tired. It's a must. Every evening, they have to go to church. So I know... Are you yeah. yeah. The, the adult people... Every day, they have to go to church. Yeah. How can we reach out to them? There's no reading culture. What so I all these books we are packing to take to Africa, people don't buy books. I mean, wow. they just want to listen to messages mm -hmm. in church. Mm -hmm. So how can we break the, the lack of reading culture, then solve the internet? Because that's where my burden is right now. I was just thinking of Africa. Okay, let me stop there now. Okay, how a woman can overcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for touching on Africa. That's time. We need internet. Once, once we have that, we solve that. 
when before before I when I was coming, I said I was saying to my wife, I said I was going to suggest um, internet radio, okay. where they could get. Um, but uh, if they don't have internet, they cannot even get the radio. No, the radio to get the radio, if it, 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 it's something we uh, I said I was going to discuss with you okay, privately. We'll discuss yeah. it. Okay, yeah. but let's I get to the stigmatization. Right. Tell us your story. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't know where to start from because it, it's a long one, you know. You are 40 years old and yes. you are a virgin. Yes. And that seems to be in the church. They thought that that would be a result of a curse. Uh huh. Yeah. And of Since when were you born again, though? Uh, I came to the Lord at the age of 10, 12. So I've really been in church all my life, wasted. That's why when I talk to you that I was a lost kid in church, you can be lost and you're in church. I lose Yeah. So all you're going to church is your faithfulness and serving God is being there, singing the choir, being a pastor's prayer partner, being the usher. You know, I we did, you do all five, all any, anything that can be done. You do it. Being the nanny for the children. Pastor. Meanwhile, it's all taking up your time. You have no time to socialize. In fact, your social skills reduce because uh, you're always, every Sunday, you're in church. Every Saturday, choir practice. So there's no social life, you know. During the week, you're busy with studies and work. So that's how the singleness starts. And then they point to, you know, you go to prophet, say, oh, I see, your dad did this, your dad did that. Who, who did, and all our fathers yeah, did all stuff. Our father, who did do father did something. <laughs> so all My those... grandfather was a abadist. <laughs> <laughs> who didn't do anything. So those things stick in your head, and you begin to say, okay, you used to connect yourself, okay, maybe. And all of a sudden, you begin to have hatred towards your parents. Mm -hmm. Yet, you know, they are, it's out of mm -hmm. ignorance, and it's not even connected to that. So... All these messages breed bitterness. Mm -hmm. You begin to hate people you're supposed to be hating, and you're calling yourself a Christian. No, because they tell you some of them are yeah. responsible for exactly. your plight. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And wherever you go to church, and uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a prayer meeting. Oh, they all turn to your direction. Oh, we sing, we sing, we sing. We forgot to pray about this. You know, so you're always being pointed to, which also wow. because you are single. Mm. Wow. So, As a single. So then I went to history makers Every Bible Sunday. school, but even if you have all the, you know, you have something to say in church, you know, you, you can't say much. You're, you're single. I mean, you can't teach. You can't lead prayers. Yeah, wow. I've been to redeemed church. I can say that, and that, that's how I was treated. In England. In England, you can't be a minister. But meanwhile, the single men can be ordained. They can be ministers, but not a lady. So is being married part of purpose? I mean, is it a prerequisite? <laughs> so I address all these things and I expose all those religious uh, dogmas in churches and uh, wrong doctrines that are putting down ladies, dis uh, you know, putting them, despising them and not making them shine. I bring out the value in them that God put them there. And instead you present marriage as something that, you know, you're supposed to have. So uh, that's what I concentrated on in that book as well. So I gave it. Did you try to do deliverance? Do uh, because you are single? <laughs> Pastor, if I sit down to do account of all the money I've paid, in Africa I'm supposed to have a palace. Mm. Uh, if I had to convert all that money, I would have converted you to maybe. Who are you giving money to? Prophets and pastors. Wow. <laughs> For what? Well, to pray and to pray and sow seed for, you know, this yes. year God may bring the husband, so sow seed. That's why so that's the, year, the, the that's husband doesn't That's why they think you're dangerous because you're giving away everything for free. That's why they think you're so yes. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to mess up the whole system yeah. Yeah. Yes. because you're giving away everything for free and you, they don't have to do anything. They don't, people don't have to give anything and you're giving it away. You're messing it up. That is a yeah, so that's a good point, brother. Yeah. That is I, a good point. I'm just going back to what she was saying. Is that right there is a tragedy to have spent so much money yeah. yes. on yes. something that we're we're to be so far above, so much wiser, so much more understanding. Yes. I'm just grabbing your story and yes. feeling what your yes. what you feel. So you are familiar with what she said, right? Yeah. yeah. Pastor. I miss that. You know your book, Stop Working for Kusa. If you have not read that book, 
Let me beg you to go and read it. If you have read it, let me double beg you to go and read it, but this time, not with your 9 to 5 work mentality cap on. Read it from a church point of view. Oh. Read it as a church, as a church person, as a Christian. Forget about your work. Read it as a Christian. You will slap yourself so hard <laughs> because, sir, because, because you will begin to see the same pattern that is operating in the secular world Uncle Sam. has gained a deep root in our churches, in our leadership, in our system, even in the doctrine that we preach, in churches, churches these days are not meant to set people free. No, you tell me, but you had what she said. Yes, sir. The fact that she is single yes. is are single people no identified singled out. Have you ever heard about that? Oh, yeah. So you are familiar with this thing she's talking about? Stop. Unless we're going to lie to ourselves. This is something that we all see mm -hmm. every day. No, I've never seen it before. No, yeah. I've seen it in church Pastor. in London where there is a single, you know, when there is uh, occasions of many events, they will pray for married couples, pray for singles, and then... <laughs> Identify them as singles, or they have even a single whatever whatever team, which means already identify you. You belong to this type. Our team, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, singles. I said, why is it because they care like for them so much? No, no. <laughs> but what do you mean the money? I don't want to understand where the money was going to. What is happening with the money issue? Tell me about that. So, as a single, do they? You know, wanted to pray for you or prophesy to you or what's up there? I don't understand. It's a system, Pastor. <laughs> it is a system. They won't say to you, pay money so that we can pray for you. But they will put you on the light of that system that you would, without a doubt in your mind, you will deduce that ah. this is what is required for you to get what you need. Can you remember the different kind of occasions when you needed to sow seed, give money? Yeah, um, I remember there was a, we had of a prophet in London, so we went there for the overnight meeting. So before you meet him, you have to put, put something in an envelope. Why? Well. So just before you meet me now, you have to put something in there? Because you don't come That's before a man of God empty. It's a business. business. Yes. No, but this is church he's talking about. Yeah, it's a business. Yeah. Right. It's a business. No, no, Why well, I mean, is he sharing the principle? No, no, he's saying the principle. What because the Bible teaches yes. us you don't come before a man of God empty handed. Exactly. Before the Lord. But that's not a doctrine. <laughs> where, where, where does it say that? It's a system. Pastor, they also tell you that yeah. the children wow. of the world, uh, was the children of God suffering so violence? Yeah. 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 And the children of God taken by force. So you have to give, you have to give, in a sense, you have to give violently. Okay, that's one example. Go ahead. You have to give violently. So when you gave the money to the man, what did the man do? They just pray and that's it. And you went back home. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You paid you have, your dues. Can I say something? God, well, that was not the only God time. bless you because they just pray and they, they let you go. Oh, yeah, they the, the ones that have perfected their system, they will put you on a diet. Of how, yeah, put you on a diet of what you need to, when you should pray and when you need to come and see the man of God for the next three months. Mm -hmm. Obviously, every time you come before the man of God, you have to go without the ah. It's a bit and deliverances that take place as well in the process. Okay, well, yeah, do you remember any instance of deliverance? Oh, yes, Pastor. There was a time, um, yeah, they, we had, uh, you know, with my housemates that time, 
we had a, a man of God who was coming from Nigeria. So oh, this man of God, the flyers and programs were advertised. Oh, he was throwing <coughs> problems out. Oh, you have immigration? Are you single? This man of God had immigration. Immigration mm. issues. You know? Outcome immigration issues. Oh, well. Do they take that in church? The, they the main problems. Outcome in prophet and immigration. The main problems in church. Talk, is he a lawyer? No. <laughs> <laughs> they they are not in the most every barrier. Every barrier. Every barrier. <laughs> immigration is a yoke. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. So if you violated the immigration rule and came to the country without the papers, so it is anointed. What connection? Ah. You need to print your papers. She said it. She said it. What was? What did she say? God will grant them favor, favor and all the oh. unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. So even if they are not qualified. Exactly. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. So God should be doing manipulation. <laughs> so if you are drunk, so God should just do manipulation and go against his own righteous rule. So God should violate his own principle. So God should now be, that means you you are bribing God. Exactly. You know, exactly. This is, a, this is not that different than the witchcraft practiced in the church in South America. As I'm hearing some of these things that I haven't heard before, the only difference is in South America that what they're giving to in the church are actual demons. But it sounds like here they're just being masked as God. Yeah. But it's the very same rituals that are done in South America where if you give this, this will get you... So you mean people will go to church to get prophets or people yeah. to pray for immigration papers? Yeah. Any issue. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, come, come, listen up. What? There's fasting, a particular church, of course, that specializes in deliverance. There could be a whole program just for people with immigration issues. Wow. So every day they sleep in church. Yeah. No, it's not possible. Okay. Ah. My issue. So talk, 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 talk. Yes. The whole month, they'll go and fast, and in the evening, there's prayer. So the prayer, of course, there's offering. So after, every every day, every day, every day. After the the forty days uh, program is over, then the pastor will say, "Oh, now God will answer your prayer. Do whatever you 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 know what your heart leads you to do. God has answered your prayers." So to for start. forty days, you're going to church, and there will be offering for forty days. Mm -hmm. ah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Twice so, a day when it's the anointing. For immigration meeting. papers. Yes. What about if the police comes there to arrest the pastor? <laughs> So they are praying that God should break the law and everything to happen. Favor. Okay, favor. I wanted to say that, um, my, I mean, I, I agree with everything that has been said, but that, um, I think there are two sides to this call. Yeah. We, talk, we focus and talk a lot about the leadership, but the, the, the system is being fed by us as yeah. a people. Yeah, yeah. And I think we need to put the search light on that aspect as well. We, we allow it. Because we want easy answers. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. for nothing. We want to get something for nothing. Yes. Quick solutions. Yeah, fix. And so the man that advertises, come and all your immigration problems will be solved. Uh, you, you're outside okay. immigration. You're now general. I understand what is happening. Yeah. The last one time on Facebook, I saw. Uh, night vigil for visas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And such meetings are packed by people. You are not saying that. Yeah, they're packed by people. Yeah, so so, the, so the man has a has a market. No, why right should be a convention? You guys should be arrested. <laughs> that kind of pastor who advertised that they must be arrested. Yes. Yes. Esther, Pastor asked you twice about deliverance. Yeah, and you talked yeah. about answered prayer. Yeah. No, most of the okay, that's one way of deliverance, but have you had people, had people try to deliver you from demons? Christians. Could you Christians, answer that yeah. when he... Oh. Thank you. Oh. I mean, people don't have papers. When we run, they run to... Oh. <laughs> so we are covering them up. Mm -hmm. There's a time, okay, let me go to the deliverance session. So, um, yeah, so we went to church, and then they would anoint us. And then they will tell us to repeat prayers. Anointing? Anointing, yes. Anointers? Anointers. Olive oil. Olive oil. Okay. Yes. So you call them anointing or anointers? Anointers. They anoint us. Okay. Yeah. 
and they give us uh, prayer prayer points to call out. You know, every spirit has burned. That has been troubling my life all my life. Yes. Die by fire. Ooh, that's one of them. <laughs> uh, so you talk people? because you are single. Uh, yes, I, you know, you get all those ideas. You, you feel maybe I have a spirit husband who's the, mm -hmm. there's an evil veil. Well. You know, you get all sorts. Of, you, you are told so many things. Evil an evil veil, an evil veil covering you, so no man. Mama. An evil veil is covering you. Evil veil. Yeah, evil so no man can no. see. No. Uh, yeah, veil like. I'm hearing this for the first time. Yeah, yeah. The yeah I never heard it before. Yes, so. And then all at times... Just this rubbish. And you are calling these places churches? <laughs> <laughs> no, serious. No, but I just don't understand. Why should they be, this place be qualified to be called churches? You know, this is a disgrace to God and to church. Why are we calling these places churches? Because the Bible is being preached. Because mm -hmm. there is prayer. There is concern. So that's like a camouflage. Mm -hmm. it's, it's... Look... I know, let that continue. Yeah, please. Yeah, so, um, you know, and uh, we we'll repeat all those prayers. That you, no, that's not good enough. Shout the loudest. You know, sometimes I, could get, I remember getting pain. Because you have to shout. <laughs> shout so that, you know, the louder I think the, the more God hears. Yeah. After that, then um, <laughs> you go for private sessions. So I entered the room with the man of God there. Wow. Then he poured oil in my ears. I drank oil. I, you know, and started beating me. Everything, you know, do, do, <laughs> do, hard. Every demon in the dirt, come out, come out. Then rolling me, turning me around, the demons in me. Roll, rolling me around until I got dizzy, I had to fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's in the book. Anyway, it's all in the book. No, no, tell me, tell me. Yeah, so they turn you around. After hitting you, remember, you are in pain. But you have to keep quiet because you are under prayer anyway. <laughs> So you endure the pain. No, but this was not like in the church. Pastor. Church. Church. And it's a church that we all know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you really have not heard this before? I've never heard that before. Oh, You've heard that before? Yeah. So, yeah, um, after that, yeah, you... Then, um, of course, he starts, he starts uh, calling out and speaking loudly, you know, every demon is troubling this, this But why is, are they connected to demon? Why are you not a Christian when you went there? Thank you. Thank yes, you sir. I also blame myself because sometimes you, you don't see God for yourself. You just no, depend but, on yourself. So, yes. these were Christians coming there. Yeah. We are all Christians. Born and born. Yes. I, Pastor, I call it Babalao Christianity. <laughs> I think we've all, been raised, right? we've all been raised on that Babalao Christianity. This is no more Christianity. Christianity. Mm -hmm. This is Babalao already. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, so after that, of course, the, the man of God says a lot of prayers, of course, shouting at you and all that. So, but this didn't really just happen to you, it happened to other people too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I still know them by name. So after that, of course, yeah, they send you away with a list of prayers to continue praying. Yeah, at oh, at, 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 <laughs> there was also another. What, what the midnight? You know, they always tell people to pray at midnight. That's when they. What the midnight? They connect it. That's when they. Twelve midnight. Oh, twelve yes. midnight. So what is that? What is about that? Is it? Connection well, is better. Twelve to three is when the the, the, the demons or fairies. Twelve yeah. to three is when the warfare. How do you know that? Against witchcraft. Who told you that one? That's all they The African churches and the internet, do the, the same. The internet connection yeah? is better. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's when witches go. Yeah, that's when yeah. witches so they said you should wake up at 12 yeah. and pray? And pray the prayers. So, so that what? Well. <laughs> so that God will answer or demons will answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, if it, is, if it is the demons that are active around that time, you are not praying to them, so you are no, not... you're waging war against you're them. Waging war no, against oh, them. I thought yeah. you are praying to God to answer you. It's like you're praying to God. In Jesus' name, they're starting to... It's like to you can hit the target yeah, yeah, yeah. better between wow. 12 and 3. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, you have to wait why it is... So what is it? What is Jesus doing then? He's sleeping. What is it for? What is it for? No, the money is... Yeah, what was the money for? 
Three and o'clock. And when I do all the work and <laughs> so I don't know faster. I don't know. I, I, I never open the doorway to heaven. <laughs> Three o'clock, the demons yeah. go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you you went home to this kind of churches for how many years? I think for most of them. Maybe 10. 10 years. Most of the time I've been in the UK. You are going to this kind of yeah. So all, uh -huh. most African churches are like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Toronto. Mm. So you are doing it for 10 years and you never got married? When would she have time? That's true. But I thought the prayer was supposed to bring the husband. That's the one the prayer was supposed to do. The prayer and the money, everything. Yeah, then they'll shift it and say, you're not exercising enough faith. So there's always an excuse you still why have it's not working. You. Oh, you, oh, you have an yeah. unforgiveness. Exactly. It's and always, then you also yeah. become angry at God. All this time I've been sowing seed. I've been <laughs> <praying. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is happening. So it's a mixture of emotions, Pastor. So in that environment, you can't grow. You can't be effective as a Christian. Yeah. And here I am. I just came on DSA. And wait, wait, wait. Wait for the sentence to hold it now. Go ahead now. She started listening to DS last year, like my live broadcast, so continue. And there's no deliverance. And here I am with someone already. Wow. Wow. Because all these messages, Confident, first of all, cleansed healing. my mind, yeah. renewed me. I yes. focused. In, in, that one, at yeah. this time, I wasn't looking at marriage at all. Mm. My focus was on my project, Kingdom everything. I wasn't uh, married left. Because when you listen to pastors, yeah, the problem with pastors' messages that <laughs> they... <laughs> yeah, I'll call it problem because they... First of all, whenever, which, whether, whichever church I go to, I always notice wrong things immediately. So that's why I'm saying it's a problem. And also that it reor uh, how can I say? Yeah, reorient Ah, uh, it reorients your mind. So the, all the things that you used to think were right have become wrong. Wrong, wrong all of a sudden. Your mind changes. Like you're beginning Christianity all over yeah. again. Mm -hmm. yeah, Yet you've been right. a Christian mm -hmm. for gener I mean, decades. Yeah. Generations. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I got born again, again, mm -hmm. after how many yeah. years? And the, that change of mind as well brings out the real person in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. people see your gifts, yeah. people see your work, yeah. and that's how the right person can be. Yes, that's the law. Yeah. You know, Pastor, it's sort of simple. Yeah. You shall know the truth, and the truth is what makes these people free. You're giving them the truth, and it's the truth that they're hearing that is making them free. Beyond all the gimmicks, beyond all, the, it's the truth. Yes. And also changing the environment, because I stopped going to church. I don't go to church. My church has been missing messages to Pastor Sunday as well. She started listening. She stopped going to church. She renewed her mind. Not going to church, not even socializing, so to say. Exactly. But she was just listening, changing her mind, mm -hmm. changing herself from inside, mm -hmm. cleansing her mind from all the rubbish. Mm -hmm. When she was true, she was ready to testify mm -hmm. about it. Even assuming that she was still going to be single for the rest of her life. And when she was... Yeah. Pastor, I did, because when we came for HMT, you gave us uh, an assignment. Yes. Whereby we had to list things we are living for. And of course, oh, as a single, you put husband. Then <laughs> so that process of dropping them one by one... And, and there, is an, there, there was a master class. You have to cancel uh -huh. all the things that are not yes. the kingdom. So I remain with God. And that means everything. Kingdom. So I was ready to That's die it. single. I That's was really focused on my assignment. When already I knew my purpose. Kingdom addicted. Yeah. Seeking for the kingdom of God. Amen. So these churches make you to seek all of that things. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just not the kingdom. Then they make you frustrated, they bring you into slavery, bondage, mm. that you lose everything, mm. that you become dependent on them, mm. they oppress you. Mm. Are we having church? Mm -hmm. yes. We are having church. We are having church. And you are engaged now. Yes, Pastor. <laughs> so 
that single men also See. come for those deliverance. Ah! ah. No, 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 Because people are going to pick up on something you're doing and they're going to run with it. And we're all just part of the preliminary thing for what God's going to do with the University of Life. And a lot of you sitting in this room, the Lord says to you, you're supposed to be faculty. So you need, you need to, some of you need to take your favorite messages. Excuse me, Pastor, i just take this one minute. You need to take your favorite messages and you need to start developing the curriculum. And then feed back to Pastor Ann. Our favorite book and develop a curriculum. Yes. But yes. just some, yes, say something about mm -hmm. what I meant. You know, the Bible said that word that Jesus preached was published. And because it was published when Cornelius needed help, he knew where to go to find mm -hmm. his sleep well. And then some, the, the, the challenge for all of us is that we are hearing all of this. We are, we are enjoying it. We are benefiting from it. But we need to be careful not to become overdosed um, and we are constipated yes, with yes, solutions yes, without giving yes, what we are getting. Because the truth is, you have friends. Even brothers and sisters, I have them too, that are in this, in some of these potholes that we've all been, and now we are coming out. We owe it to them. We owe it to the kingdom of God. 
when when uh, uh, what's his name found Jesus, he went back and called his brother. He said, "Come and see the Messiah that we've been talking about. We've been waiting for. I found him, and that is what we all need to do. What we are receiving, what we are hearing, what is blessing us, what is setting us free, what is changing our lives. We need to start telling others." without being afraid of what will my leader say or what will my department head say. You see, we've become enslaved to titles and positions mm -hmm. that we have sacrificed our salvation on the altar of mm -hmm. position and whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. What would you like us to do? What would you like to see people do with what they're hearing? Um, I think <coughs> what the two brothers have just said uh, is exactly what we all need to do. Uh, we need to do several things. Number one thing to do, of course, is to share. But that is the most elementary thing to do. There are other things that we could do to spread the word. The basic thing is to spread the word. So what are the other things we could do? Number one, we could actually directly send messages into people's inboxes. Mm -hmm. Just take the time to do that. Number two we could, the thing we could do is to make it a point of duty to get a link, and it's not a big thing, it's not a, it's not a complicated thing. Go to YouTube, <coughs> press on some link of the YouTube, copy a link of the YouTube, and put it on your own something, or I'll say a few things about it, that mm -hmm. video. Let's do that every day, several times. Mm -hmm. Let people just try. I don't know if people could invite or spread uh, YouTube messages on YouTube itself. I don't know that. But on Facebook, you can spread it. You can just take the link and, you know, it will come up as a page. You can share YouTube. Okay. So let's spread that. So that's another thing we could do. Next thing we could do is to take a book that has blessed you. Comment on it. Or even if you cannot comment on it, by video, because you can do a video of the book, a video review of the book you have read, or of the message that you have heard. Maybe not a book, even just a message that you've heard. Mm -hmm. If you've heard that message and it bless you, do a review. Maybe a short review, but let people know about it and spread it. Mm -hmm. Another thing you could do is that if you got a message that bless you, you could just say, I, I listened to this message today. It blessed me. I just just write your own your own mm -hmm. opinion on your own timeline. And you know, invite your friends. Another thing you could do is to you know, do a short summary. Mm -hmm. A short summary, just a few points of what you got from that message or that book. Put it there and keep on repeating and share it with people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I don't, in fact, I even tell people go get the cassettes or the CDs, get copies of it, go sell, sell them, make your money, use it to sponsor your family or to yourself. Mm -hmm. Or to do your ministry. Get the books, put your price on it. Anything you want to do, you do a package of CDs or something, series, go and sell them. JG in London, that's what he did with the financial series. And he's, he's, you know, he's, he said he's making a lot of money and a good money in the form that. He gave it a, another, another name though. We call it financial series. It means either champions of money or something like that. Mm -hmm. something. You know, he gave it a good selling name. And he's selling and he's popularizing and people are calling out to him and they don't know that it's the same thing that is there for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they're paying for it. And he has more people paying for it, getting it from him, than they are going to listen to him for free in my own place. <laughs> you would think that because he's there for free, I mean, there's no, nobody will buy it. But he's having more people buy it. Calling him for even from Africa, they are sending, they are getting through all kind of complicated processes to send money to him so that he will send them cities mm -hmm. from London to Africa, Latin America, everywhere. <coughs> so that's another thing that could be done. Then another thing that we could do is to do what Ogene uh, Tega is doing. What Tega does is to take one of the books and she begins to. You know, review it. I even saw the, the last message of Tegas that I saw 
was very brilliant. I liked the way she did it. I, I did, you know, I, I do some, some of these interviews sometimes. And the, the interview I did, one time I did an interview about Moses and Joshua generation. So I think what she did is she named me the same thing. Moses, how to know if you are going to, but if I just say Moses and Joshua generation, but she said, how to know, are you under a Moses leadership? Or a, so she's expanding her name to, you know, to relate more in her own language. And then what she did in that message is she preached a one hour message on her own on that same topic. But she is making it more practical to people who are up on the level. I just give out all the principles, but she is making it to relate to, you know, people on a level, on other church members. And then she is telling them everything that that Moses' generation will tell us to do this, tell you to do this in church, and you know that's not what's supposed to be. And just bring out practical examples. So a lot of things like that that could be done. Right? <coughs> Thank you. Can I just say that? Also, guys, uh, on Facebook, can you please make your to who can see? Can you make it public? Okay, because just like right now, I want to copy Jefferson or uh, I want to share what he posted, but it's, I cannot share it. Because, you've, you, most, most because even though I'm his friend, I'm his friend, mm. but come and see. I'm his friend, but I cannot even share anything he posts. Mm. See, there's no share button. You know why there's no share button? No. Because you did not notice that in your uh, set setting, where is the setting? It's written private. Friends oh. only. Well, they, friends. Yeah, but even I'm friends, but I cannot share it. Yes, because you will share and it will become public. So you can see it as a friend, but by you, sh if, if you see it as a friend, you still can't share. Yeah, that I, would I need help with that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Because I, when I was public, is that something I had to show me to fix? Yeah, yes, I can share. When, when I was public, it's no, a I, setting. You have to change. The I was setting. getting like to seven, make it seven they, they always, ten. They always ask you who could see this. See the, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. have to yeah. say public. Yeah, public. Yeah. Yeah. When I was doing public, I was getting seven to ten women a day asking to be friends. That is part of it. So, I'm but, also having that. Don't worry about it. No, but what, is there a way to... I'm just asking a question. I'm not worried. Okay, I'm fine. I want to know how to screen that. Is, is, is there a way? Forget it's about like, screening. Don't, don't let it get to us first. Okay. Yeah. Let it get to us first. Okay. So another thing that I think can be done also, most of us now have uh, one program or another that we've been on Facebook, on Twitter, or whatever. Every, every time you are on your program, you have already have the audience that are following you under your program. It is an excellent platform for you to say, I've read this book, and I can tell you this is what I learned from it. You know, like Oprah Winfrey will do a, a book club, mm. yeah. and she will just mention one book, and that book within a week will become bestseller mm. because she recommends that book to her book club. Uh, so we can we can do that. Excellent. And I, I do that for my uh, weekly program, especially with the month we're doing uh, finance. Uh, yeah. Constantly just talking about stop working for Uncle Sam. Mm. So you wow, you have some very good photographs here. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah, he took some, some good ones. He yeah. has yeah, very he good ones. But I don't think you can, can share them. them. Yeah. You can share, you can share them. I, can, I couldn't you share them either. I, I, I wanted to share his photo, yeah. but I couldn't no. share them. Okay. So, are you recommending we just welcome everybody? Pastor? Sorry? Well, everyone who wants to be okay. friends, just welcome us. Don't worry about it, anything. Just welcome them. What do you think? No, when they are saying they are inviting, you don't have to receive their invitation now. Uh -huh. You don't have it's to. It's not compulsory. Ah, we get. Ah, yeah, you got that to confirm what the means. Confirm what the means. Ah, okay. So, this can be shared now. Ah, okay. This is a typical 60 plus age question. <laughs> Jefferson has got some great pictures here. But I, cannot, I think I don't share it. 
Yes. Is it is it shareable now? Yeah. Is it shareable now? Yeah. How do I know? It would have a map of the world instead of two frames. Well, you know, I can't share it here. Where is it? Mm -hmm. It needs to refresh. Well, I know that. Oh, I do that one way. Change the page. Oh, you want to change the page? Change the page. Yeah, that's no Share, share, share. Share, share, Jefferson Park. No, you see, no, no shit. Oh, now, if I go to this page, you still no shit. 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 I'm not sure the good ones that you get. He's going to refresh it now and then you'll be able to. You change it. You change it. You change it. You really want to come out. Okay, guys. So, how can we get your books? Uh, you know, stig stigmatization or what they call it. Oh, I think you can share it now. Yeah, I can yes. share it now. So, there are two, there are two, um, there were two um, albums. Okay. Though, we fixed one, we didn't fix it. I just fixed the second one following her instructions. Okay, one I can share already. Yeah, the other one to can share. Okay. How can we get your book? Can you tell people how they can get your book? Okay. Um, the book is published on Amazon. And uh, they had had hard copy. The Kindle version will come out soon. Uh, they can also go at authorhouse.com to order from the website. And what's the name, complete name of the book and the author? Okay, the title is How a Single Woman Can Overcome Stigmatization Thriving in a World of Negative Stereotypes. Yeah, slowly. Well, now I can share it too. Oh, yeah. So, can you, share, can you tell everybody how to do this? Okay, so. Because we need to share, tell the people on this something. So, what did you just do? So, basically, when you post, instead of saying uh, share with friends, you say share with the world, like everyone can public, see it. Yeah. Public. Uh, so that way, other people can share what you posted. Does this say share with the world? No, it says share with share everyone. With share with everyone. All, everyone. Public. all public. All What you need to do is go to your settings, and you have option of everyone, which is public, uh, you only, or friends. So you always choose public, which would also translate to everyone. So public or everyone. That's what Facebook usually asks. Um, don't use uh, friends only or only you. Obviously, you know, only you would only show yourself. You can only say, and if you share with friends only, it means that only people that are on your friend list, that are your friends that will be able to see your post. And even when they see your post, they cannot share it because you've given the instruction, which is the first one, which is <coughs> friends only. So those friends can Now, see all of it, Jefferson's can be shared. All yes. of them are open now. Yes. yes. But tell, tell them again, because many people have shared even there something. Yeah. I you couldn't share. share. I yeah, share. Okay. And I've written to so many people, but still, um, no. They just don't know how to do it. So That's a good problem. I did a screenshot, sir. So yes. privacy, you go to privacy, and then you go to uh, settings, settings privacy. The options it are... Yeah. Any privacy. Mm -hmm. So the options are everyone, public. Friends only and only you. It would say you only. So you always go for the public option. And the the post that you posted prior to changing your your settings will still remain how it was. So the post that you had before, you need to also go back to those posts and change them because they wouldn't change immediately. Because you know, Facebook would assume that you wanted those ones yeah. to be for friends only and maybe subsequent posts to then be uh, public. So just going to them is quite easy to do. 
on each post. If you've already posted and it's on your page, you just you can it depends on your device, but if you're using any of the mobile device, beside your post, there is an arrow that is going down. So when you click on that arrow, it will show you privacy. You, you tap on the privacy and change it to public. And the public would also so show a, a world map, which is the globe. Whereas uh, friends only will show two, two um, images of uh, two people. So always have the globe on your post. Who can see it is the globe. That will show you that it's public. And how if do we need, share from our own? Can uh, we do that? Yes, you can share from sure. your own. How do we do that? So do you have to like it first, or what do you do? It, it would have an option. Once it's public, it would have an option to, to share. Um, if, if it's on your page already, you can tag people. So when you tag people, you're sharing it with them. When you tag. So when you post and you tag other people, that's another good thing. You tag other people to save, or you can actually send it individually to people. But it's just by a click of a button as well. Share with friends. With share, you can tap on the friends that you want to sure. send it to on Messenger. So it's on Facebook, the Messenger would also pick it up and send it. But how about sharing with everybody? How does that work? Once you post it, everybody will see it if it's public. Like Julie, yeah. Julie, is Julie here? Yeah. She's gone? Because yeah. your own cannot be shared too. Oh, okay. Let me show you. Oh, so it'd be good for you to do a whole session for people for the DSA family. Ah, okay. I know you did I one. I can share. The, the if I share, I think you so add so. some on Instagram. Mm. That is the one that cannot be shared. Okay. But the ones on your Facebook can be shared. Thanks. Abraham Gray did a good job. He, he shared some photographs. If anyone needs help, I can help right now to do it. Mr. and Mrs. McDonald are here. It's like it's their own wedding at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> nice picture, huh? <laughs> Afro woman. <laughs> Diana Rose. Bring it back. <laughs> Bring it back. Tina Turner. What? Tina Turner. Yeah, Tina Turner. Okay, guys. You were sharing something no longer ago about the next generation <laughs> and the way we are losing our next generation away to the church and the Christian. Mm. <clears throat> what is happening is that you know they they don't get it because the way we are presenting the whole thing to them, they, they can't connect the dots. Mm. And what Pastor is doing that I can see is that he's able to connect the, the, the whole thing. It's also not, probably, the, you can only give what you have. Whereby the intention may be good, like, we know that you have to be the top, you have to be the head, the desire to take us to the mountain top is always there with the ministers. How do you get them there? It's a difficult thing. But pastor is able to really Take it and then only just say that be there, but rather help us to get there as well. It's kind of give out the steps and the block to get there. And that's oh, uh, it is making sense now. <laughs> oh, now I can connect to it. Oh, now I understand it now. Oh, okay. If, but just that out there, 
just come to this area, that the, the, the drive, that you gotta make it happen. How do you make it happen? And it's all about face, 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 face. You can't even connect. And our kids, <laughs> our kids are like, okay, if you pray, this happen. God wants me to become that. God is that. But you know, Shirley, you, I mean, you have, you have said this for about 20 years now, Daddy. Mm -hmm. But it's just not happening to you. So is it true that they want to have practical things? And it's, it is true. We have to find a way to really, really... It's true. Um, and I think also the message that um, the narrative that uh, is commonly pushed out in churches is just not connecting with the young children, with, 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 with the youth. It's not. What I have found is that when you start talking about integrity, honesty, you know, compassion, and things like that. Which is, that's what Jesus Christ actually taught us. You begin to connect with us. But yes, when you when you when when all the coming to church and hear about this, you know, some tiny, something spiritual husband, anointing oil, you that's where we're using them. That's what I'm saying. That thank God for what all of us, this 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 well here in Ukraine that all of us have been drawing from, but you know, but we need to do a lot more work, especially at that level, to begin to change the narrative and 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 they respond to that. The the young respond to that. Yeah. I, I think we're missing a big a, a, a big truth in all of this, and the truth where I think, in my opinion, I stand corrected. The truth I think we're missing is we 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 are limiting the power of God to our minute brain. I think churches we we have we have portrayed God as if he can't connect to the teenagers. The reason we are losing our teenagers, yes, I understand the presentation. But the reason we're losing them is because we're not, we're not preaching God to them. We're preaching what looks like God and telling them this shadow can deliver. But shadow won't deliver a jack. Nothing. God does. The Bible is so simple. Even a stupid person can understand it. Mm -hmm. The reason people are missing the truth and the power of the Bible is preachers. Yes. Because suddenly we feel, oh, if we put it that way, they won't connect to it. We think connecting to the truth of the Bible is in the head. No, it's not. The things of God are revealed to the spirit. It is a spiritual connection. You can preach till the cow comes home. If the connection is not there, all you've done is giving a good motivational speech. When we go back to preaching the Bible and not what we heard on CNN and not what we heard from the, the latest motivational speaker and then put the name of Jesus just to make it look religious. When we go back to preaching the Bible, People will connect. Because the heart of every human being is longing for the, the, that connection with God. Mm. What is causing this seemingly disparity is that we've, we've moved away from preaching God. We've moved into storylines and, and, and motivational speaking. You know, I love preaching in the Bible, but I'll tell you something. A lot of people believe that the Trinity is the Father, Son, and the Holy Bible instead of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and Pastor is very rarely quoting scripture intentionally, I learned from him. And he's coming with principles and truth that's enlightening people's minds. That's really attractive to him. So at this point, he's the faculty. You know, we need to direct people there. But 
God wants to start enlightening all of our minds too. Yeah, and, and what you just said, I think uh, it, it leads me to the question my my children asked. They mm -hmm. said, Dad, when you close your eyes, what picture of Jesus do you see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've not answered that question. <laughs> That's what they asked me. I don't even know how to answer the question. <laughs> I was just looking at them as they were, where did the question come from? <laughs> you sure I'll get back to that. It's just not you. Just repeat the question. I'll get back to you. We were talking before about why people are resisting this message. Edward Sam, yours are not. So they cannot be copied. Oh, I didn't know it. Like that. Yeah, that's why you should shake. <laughs> it's just good to be aware. If there's truth, like Pastor Derek was saying, it's truth. Well, we we really do have an enemy. I don't like focusing on the enemy, either, but this is real. You know, I had a spiritual son in Finland, and years we walked together. I was his pastor of 25 years. He became the chairman of the board for the Archbishop of Finland. He's one of the eight main guys for Lutheran Church in Finland. But still, he was a reformer. He was a, he, we were doing great in our relationship. But I invited two of uh, pastors' main disciples to come to Finland, and we did a uh, mini HMT. Okay? This guy, who is my spiritual son, I love him. We're connected for 25 years. He physically got sick at that event. He physically got sick. And when uh, Pastor Alexander, the tall, tall guy here, when he was when he was preaching and talking about you know preferring heaven to earth, it was misunderstood, and the enemy put a put a, a thing into my my dear brother, my son, and Lord, his mind that oh this was this was a spirit of death connected to the teaching. So that superstitious oh yeah yeah so this superstitious thing, and then what it led to was. Even though I started the church together with them, I was the senior pastor, they said, because of your connection with Pastor Sunday, there's come an uncleanness there spiritually that we're just not comfortable with. And I, you know, is there any sin? Is there any, no, 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 there's no sin. There's nothing, we still love you, we want to have a relationship, but we don't feel comfortable anymore for you to be part of our eldership and to do stuff citywide, because we had started a citywide movement with, you know, and, but that whole thing got shut down, and it was because of the demonic response to this higher level of truth. And you need to know that. There's a spiritual battle. We shouldn't focus on the enemy, but this is real. This is real. And in this city, one of my dearest friends in this city is a man of God. He's seen Jesus also a couple of times. He's built a cathedral in this city. Uh, it's like a $25 million cathedral. His denomination tried to steal it from him. Pastor knows him well. We've had good friendship for years and years. I love this man. I trust this man. He's a man of principle, a man of integrity. But when he's, when there start to come bad reports about Pastor, instead of doing what the Bible said, to go and sit down with him and talk with him about it, he just chose, no, I don't want to meet with Pastor. There's another guy in the city. He has one of the largest churches in the world, Messianic churches. Messianic and, church. Messianic church. And, and, and I... I've been his spiritual big brother. I mean, I always used to go and preach in that church. And, and he started to get this crazy idea that pastor's doing witchcraft here. African witchcraft. You know, <laughs> doing voodoo on people's minds. With just, and it's just a self-development thing. It's no longer about Jesus and the gospel. And so he got so careful. Yeah, voodoo. <laughs> yeah. Up, again, up the tree, right? <laughs> yeah. but, and, and it's just insane. So I said to this man who I love... Well, let's go meet with Pastor. Come on, we sit down with you. Nope. So there's real spiritual warfare going on with this stuff. And when I wanted to defend Pastor, he's told me, nope. You know, because he's finding out who his real friends are. Yeah. And I'm learning from him because I realize it's the same. Because who are our real friends? Who are we really have in fellowship with? You know, it's people who just want to be disciples of the Lord. And they'll pay any price for it. Man. I start with ganja, you also will come to shit. Yeah?
maybe you need to make it more public. No, it's not public right yet. Look for yourself. Right, the share button. And this is as bad as that. Oh, yeah? Oh. Why is open this one, eh? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what? In most places, it shows three. You see? One, two, three. That's why I put it. One, two, three. Oh, oh, yeah. But well, here, I can't see the third one. Okay. Then, okay. <laughs> okay, guys. I think it's about time for us to say bye-bye, I guess, to our people who are at washing at home, no? So, it's been a, I think it's high time to call it a day because tomorrow morning we are all starting another set of celebration. Mm -hmm. So, welcome to Ukraine. Welcome to DNC Family's lifestyle. Yes. It's an unending process, but tomorrow <laughs> we are going to be able to show you everything going on in life. So, thank you so very much, everyone. I think it was not an organized kind of fellowship we are tonight, but at least we were able to gather together and relate. Have a wonderful event. Tomorrow we go to church. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's event is going to be in the church.